Ladies and gentlemen, meet the brain. He is a yellow, sad, fat, diabetic lab mouse who will have a short life. He's like this because he has in his DNA a gene named agouti. But if his mother, who also has the agouti gene, is fed during her pregnancy on a diet rich in vitamin B12 and folic acid, which we can find in broccoli, for example, she gives birth to Pinky, <laughs> a healthy lab mouse. But you see, Pinky's DNA, his genetics, didn't change. He still has the agouti gene. So why was he not born like brain anymore? The answer for this is on epigenetics, where epi means beyond, above. It works like this. Our DNA is the recipe to make ourselves. But there are some molecules capable of hiding parts of the DNA. It's like in those top secret documents where they cover in black parts of the information. The information is still there, you just cannot read it. So epigenetics is the mechanism that controls which parts of our DNA will be covered and which parts will be not. So in the end, what happened to Pinky? His agouti gene got covered, as if it didn't exist anymore. So he was born normal. And this was due to the epigenetic changes caused by his mother's diet. But you see, it's not only diet. There are other environmental factors that can also influence epigenetics and then can be passed to next generations. For example, fathers who start smoking before 15 years old they get epigenetic changes that increase around three times the chances of their sons to develop asthma. And even if they had quit smoking five years before conception. Guys, this is mind-blowing, you see. We have been living on an era of genetic determinism in which was told us that our DNA dictates our biological fate. If we have this gene, you'll be like this. If you have that gene, you'll be like that. But now we are seeing, through epigenetics, how the environment can actually hide some parts of the DNA while let others work normally. This is epic. This is epigenetics. <laughs> In the end, we are going to genetics and beyond.